Hello everyone in Cardio Minds channel and we are starting a new guidelines which are the 2022 AC guidelines on the management of ventricular arrhythmias and prevention of sudden cardiac death. The first topic we are discussing today is the definitions on which we are basing our discussion later in the videos. Let's start with defining the different types of ventricular arrhythmias. A premature ventricular complex, or we famously abbreviate as PVC, is a premature occurrence of an abnormally wide QRS complex with a broad T wave in the opposite direction to the major QRS deflection and, of course, no preceding P wave to differentiate it from PEC with apparent conduction. It may be unifocal or we call them monomorphic BVCs, which are BVCs showing single QRS morphology or polymorphic showing different QRS morphologies. The short coupled BVC is an PVC that interrupts the T wave of the preceding conducted pate, which is a vulnerable zone that may result on RNT phenomena that predispose to torsade de pointe. Then we define VT itself as three or more consecutive ventricular ectopic beats at a rate above 100 beats per minute originating from the ventricles independent from the atrium AV nodal conduction resulting in VA dissociation. It can be monomorphic VT which shows the same QRS morphology from beat to beat but it may be polymorphic VT in which there is continually changing QRS morphology. The VT can be non-sustained, which is a run of consecutive BVC persisting from 3 beats up to 30 seconds as a maximum. So non-sustained VT resolves spontaneously after less than 30 seconds and so no need for cardioversion. Whereas sustained VT, whether monomorphic or polymorphic VT, is continuous for at least 30 seconds or more and so it requires an intervention for termination. Bidirectional VT is a subtype showing p 2 p alternation of the QRS axis, which may occur in catecholaminergic polymorphic VT, anderson towel syndrome, which is a subtype of long QT syndrome, digoxin toxicity, or acute myocarditis. And the famous torsad de pointe VT, which is a subtype of polymorphic VT in the context of QT prolongation, resulting in continually changing QRS morphology regarding the axis, not only the morphology, as it appeared to twist around the ECG baseline. That's why it is called in French torsade de pointe. And the ultimate ventricular fibrillation, which is a chaotic rhythm with irregular undulation and timing and morphology without discrete QRS complex, and so there are no epical or carotid pulsation resulting in cardiac arrest which need, of course, immediate defibrillation and cardiac life support. Electrical storm is one of the famous definitions, which is defined as ventricular arrhythmia, either VT or VF, occurring in three or more times within 24 hours, separated by at least five minute intervals. Of course, each one of them requiring termination, whereas incessant VT is continuous sustained VT that recurs promptly despite repeated intervention for termination over several hours or maybe persistent without any time we able to restore sinus rhythm. There are other definitions not mentioned in these guidelines but we are going to discuss them shortly like slow VT which is a sustained VT at a relatively slower heart rate less than 150 beat per minute but still more than 100 or better to be more than 110 with clear VA dissociation and is common in patients taking antiarrhythmic medication slowing down the ventricular rate and more common of course in patients with structural heart disease and so it may be easily missed in diagnosis despite the clear VA dissociation. The term of ventricular flutter is not commonly used in our clinical practice, describing a VT with continuous sine wave pattern and no identifiable P or T waves. Rate usually exceed 200 P per minute and that's why the patient is usually hemodynamically unstable. This is an extreme form of VT with loss of the isoelectric line in between complexes, the same as an atrial flutter. That's why it's short-lived and may generate easily into VF and the pulseless VT, which is the other type of shock rhythm with VF, which is describing regular and wide complex tachycardia, the same as VT, but there are no epical or carotid 
pulsation. That's why it is a combined clinical and ECG diagnosis resulting in cardiac arrest. And so it needs immediate defibrillation SVF. Now let's deal with some of the definitions of the worst clinical scenarios that we are going to deal with. Unexplained syncope, as we know from the guidelines of 2018, that it is transient loss of consciousness due to cerebral hyperperfusion characterized by rapid onset, short durations, and spontaneous complete recovery, but unexplained after conventional workup. That's why we describe it as unexplained. While arrhythmic syncope is the same as above, but here the clinical situation is highly suspicious for intermittent bradycardia to rapid SVT or even ventricular arrhythmias that may be correlated with risk of sudden cardiac death. Sudden cardiac arrest describes a sudden cessation of normal cardiac activity with hemodynamic collapse, necessitating immediate cardiac compression and starting basic life supports. While sudden cardiac death describes sudden natural death, we are not speaking here about a survivor of sudden cardiac arrest, presumed to be of cardiac cause that occurs within one hour of the onset of symptoms in a witness case, or within 24 hours of the last time this patient was seen alive and well when it is unwitnessed. The sudden unexplained death describes this situation in an individual more than one year whereas the sudden arrhythmic death syndrome explains the unexplained sudden death occurring in an individual more than one year, but with negative pathological or toxicological assessment, and so it is synonymous with autopsy negative sudden unexplained death. And the sudden infant death syndrome describes the same situation, but an individual less than one year, we are speaking about an infant with negative pathological and toxicological assessment and negative forensic examination of the circumstances of death. Now let's deal with some of the definitions related to genetics. The American College of Medical Genetics has put a framework for the interpretation of disease causation by genetic variants into five classes, but the most important two classes are class 5, described as pathogenic, and class 4, described as likely pathogenic. Mutation describes this class 4 and class 5, which is responsible for a certain genetic disease, either structural, heart disease, or channelopathy, and the variant is described as it has uncertain significance if the change in the gene's DNA sequence has unknown effect on the person's health. When we mention the word genotype, we mean the combination of alleles that they possess for a specific gene that are inherited from the parents and determined by biological tests, so we are speaking mainly about the patient's genome. Whereas the phenotype describes the external criteria and traits apparent on an individual. So for example, when we are speaking about hair color, so the genes responsible for this specific hair color are called the genotype, and the apparent color of the hair is described as the phenotype, influenced by genotype, of course, but maybe affected by external environmental factor. Phenocopy is another terminology that describes a patient having characteristics of a certain genetic disease, but they are not caused by these genes, but it is produced by environmental factor. So we usually deal with genotype and phenotype when we describe genetic disease. Now let's deal with some facts related to sudden cardiac death. First of all, the instance. The sudden cardiac death accounts for about 50% of all cardiovascular death, and it represents the first manifestation of cardiovascular disease in 50% of cases. It is a large percentage, of course. The instance increases markedly with age, with one per 100,000 persons per year during infancy and childhood, rising to 50 in the fifth and sixth decade, and then 200 in the eighth decade of life. At any age, males have higher rates of sudden cardiac death compared with females, even after adjustment of the risk factors of coronary artery disease. Regarding the causes, so cases suspicious of sudden cardiac death should be identified from multiple sources and undergo autopsy to exclude non-cardiac causes. In the Western world, sudden cardiac death is closely related to coronary artery disease responsible for about 75 to 80 percent of cases. And while the prevalence of coronary artery disease has not decreased 
but there has been a significant decline in mortality due to coronary artery disease resulting from the advances in the early invasive strategy and primary PCI for STEMI. So the incidence of sudden cardiac death is declining, but the risk itself as a proportion of the overall cardiovascular death may have increased. The most common causes in the young population is the chyelopathies, cardiomyopathies, myocarditis, and coronary anomalies. And so below the age of 50 year chyelopathy or structural non-ischemic heart disease may cause more than 50% of sudden cardiac death cases. However, coronary artery disease still represent a major cause starting from the fourth decade and in older population chronic structural heart disease predominate like coronary artery disease valvular heart disease and heart failure. This is a very interesting diagram that explains the age of presentation of each type of cardiovascular disease and whether the dominant type of ventricular arrhythmia is polymorphic or monomorphic VT. So for example, the catecholaminergic polymorphic VT and long QT usually peak at the age from 10 to 20 with the predominance of polymorphic VT, while Progada syndrome usually appears from the age of 30 to 40 with predominance of polymorphic VT. The incidence of ischemic heart disease usually increase with advancing age with predominance of polymorphic VT with acute coronary syndrome and monomorphic VT with chronic coronary syndrome. Then the structural heart disease like sarcoidosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy or ARVC usually increase in incidence after the age of 30 and with predominance of course of monomorphic VT due to scar related etiology. Regarding the effect of sport, regular physical exercise of course benefits cardiovascular health. However, sports if practiced vigorously has been shown to be associated with the risk of sudden cardiac death during or shortly after exercise in selected population and the majority of sports related sudden cardiac death occur in a recreational activity rather than competitive setting especially in middle-aged male participants suggesting that coronary artery disease is still the most common underlying cause. We usually remember the risk indicators for sudden cardiac death in coronary artery disease. Well, the most important two of them are the LV ejection fraction and NEHA class Beside other risk factors like late potentials, heart rate variability, periodic repolarization dynamics, and pyroreflex sensitivity. The most important two factors are the LV ejection fraction and NEHA class, as they are the only two factors to influence the clinical decision like the indication for ICD primary prevention or secondary prevention in specific cases. And the last topic we are going to speak about today is the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, which is still showing low survival rate, although there are major regional disparities according to the availability of automated external defibrillator and the training of the population for basic life support. The early implementation of resuscitation before the arrival of the emergency paramedics has been identified as the key element to improve survival and the bystander CPR and use of AED have showed improvements of neurological outcome and survival of the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest patients. So the recommendations regarding out-of-hospital cardiac arrest that public access defibrillation should be available at sites where cardiac arrest is more likely to occur like sport clubs, prompted CPR by the bystanders is recommended, and we should promote community training regarding basic life support to increase bystander CPR rate and quality and the use of AED, and class 2A to use mobile phone based alerting of basic life support trained bystander volunteers to assist the nearby victims, as this helped to increase the detection rate and the survival rate. So we have reached the end of our first video in this guidelines and our take home message today is that history taking and accurate ECG analysis can help you to put the patient in which risk category upon which you can start your workup for the ventricular arrhythmias and so this would be the topic of our next video in the guidelines. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'm waiting for your comments regarding which topics you want to discuss or focus in the guidelines of ventricular arrhythmias.